sound guided UPA for vascular access occlusion. I have no financial conflicts of interest to disclose. The purpose of today's presentation is to introduce the use of ultrasound guided PPA for vascular access occlusion in our hospital, Jose Daiichi. Since April 2004, ultrasound guided endovascular treatment of vascular access has been the first choice in our hospital. This slide shows trends in the number of cases and fluoroscopy assistance rate and surgical risk construction assistance rate. The fluoroscopy assistance rate and the surgical construction assistance rate have progressively increased with the increase in the number of cases. 840 patients, 17, 30 events who could be followed up among 993 patients undergoing with construction at the hospital for vascular access occlusion between May 2014 and November 2020 were enrolled in this study. This is the breakdown of endovascular treatment case. There are three case groups of patients. First, the surgical risk construction group it is a group of patients undergoing anastomosis modification. Secondly, endovascular treatment group. In other words, it is a group of patients undergoing endovascular treatment with reservation of the current VA. Third, the hybrid group who underwent preservation of the current VA and surgical thrombectomy. These are advantages of ultrasound guided techniques. Firstly, it can be safely approached in occluded regions that do not pass code trust. Secondly, thrombus treatment is ensured. Last but not least, it is easy to control pain by doing local anesthesia. We can reliably inflate local anesthesia around the region with ultrasound guidance. When the needle of local anesthesia is advanced while applying foot pressure towards the vascular adventitia, the anesthetic inflates to encycle the vessel above the, <coughs> the adventitia. If the needle is advanced along the long axis, the anesthesia yeah, and can be inflated uh, throughout the region. These are the devices used, used uh, during the procedure. Firstly, ultrasound devices mainly use the GE Healthcare Logic S8, 11 MHz liner probes. The subclavian vein and the brachiocephalic vein regions were visualized using a microconvex probe from the intercostal space or sub uh, supraclavicular region. Next, guide wires were mainly used between 0.014 and 0.018 inches. The barrel mainly used as a special type, it was 2.5 to 7 millimeter in diameter and 2 to 8 centimeter in length. For around this process, Thrombuster tube or contrast catheter were used as suction devices. Meanwhile, a Fogarty catheter organizing thrombectomy balloon and biopsy forceps were used for organizing thrombs according to vessel clothes and thrombotic property. The biopsy forceps used a radial gel form made by Boston Scientific. We conducted an evaluation for initial results. Both methods yielded high initial success rate. In the endovascular treatment group, four patients required surgical reconstruction at the same time. Two patients required intraoperative endoscopy, and one patient had pseudo aneurysms requiring surgical reconstruction. There were 503 cases uh, used using suction devices, 459 cases using biopsy forceps, and 392 cases using force devices. 
there were 87 cases requiring a uh, cat invariant. Also, here were 12 cases requiring stent and two cases requiring stent graft. Four cases require through technique to follow the balloon in guideline for the treatment of complex pathologies. Those patency rates for each treatment method. High long term patency rates were also obtained in endovascular treatment. That's one. A case of AVF chronic obstruction. The patient was treated due to poor hemostasis and difficulty in securing the puncture site. This happened due to occlusion near the elbow region of the forearm internal shunt. Ultrasound revealed a 3 cm thrombotic occlusion near the elbow. The four French teeth was inserted from the central side, which seemed to be easy to grasp the true lumen from the region monopoly. This is a video of non thrombotic occlusion near the elbow. The local anesthesia was carried out in the short axis. Um, there were uh, 0.018 inch treasure was advanced into the true lumen uh, with a 6 mm diameter balloon backup. Concomitant use of short axis confirmed that the true lumen is captured. Expansion of the balloon was then performed. Finally, decanization was confirmed by the flow. Case 2. This is a case of left subclavian vein obstruction. This stenosis has been repeated after decanalization with PTA combined with fluoroscopy. Then it was treated with ultrasound guided alone for the stenosis. The microconvex probe was used to eliminate the supraclavian region. It was approached through the larger cutaneous vein of the upper arm. By using an inflation balloon that is still not direct <coughs> yet to, to provide a cap, 0.016 abyss guide wire is brought to the occlusion site. The therapeutic effect was determined by pressure disparity on palpation. Phase 3 patient with the AVG occlusion case. You could see the occlusion at forearm loop graft. This was how we dealt with it. Firstly, insert two six French scissors facing each other. Then, strong aspiration and organizing thrombectomy were performed. We used protective devices such as the tourniquet to prevent thrombus outflow during surgery as appropriate. After that, we performed balloon dilation at main stenosis near the venous site anastomosis. In this video, we were inserting two the six French long four centimeter scissors. Thrombus aspiration was performed. Organized thrombus retained in the venous anastomosis. Extraction with pipe three hole slips was performed for arterial organized thrombus. Organized thrombus in the venous anastomosis was extracted by biopsy forceps. We then performed balloon dilatation of the stenotic segment. Yoroi with diameter of 6 mm was used. Lastly, P flow was used to confirm recanalization and to check if there was any remaining thrombus. It is possible to reliably grasp the thrombus by compression maneuver with a probe. This is the scene where the mural thrombus above the prosthetic graft is being removed with the biopsy forceps. 
the compression maneuver resulted by the probe was utilized. What did the care with ultrasound? What did the difference to X ray and angiography? Could you image the original solid body? Measures to assist ultrasound guided procedure. Use of two dimensional images. In Japan, we can only use limited kind of devices in endoscopic procedure and we have to use a lot of ingenuity in performing them. Thus, I will introduce various kinds of ideas that are feasible using ultrasonography. I hope you will actually be able to realize the potential of ultrasound guided procedures. Contrast enhancement and fluoroscopy. Contrast enhancement and fluoroscopy can be effectively used as measures to complement ultrasonography, where ultrasonic depth is difficult due to the depth of the blood vessels or their severe calcification. ICG fluorescence navigation. Indocenic in the cyanine type mainly used for liver function tests. It emits light when it binds to plasma proteins and receives radiation at near infrared rays. This method can be used as a navigation tool for ultrasound guided procedure for the treatment of patients who need a dose limitation of a contrast agent or who require bedside treatment. <laughs> ICG emits light like this when it binds to plasma proteins and receives radiation at near infrared rays. The resolution is low and the details are unclear compared with contrast enhanced images. This is a narrowed region. There is a problem that superficial blood vessels are emphasized. It can also be used as an aid to start an ultrasound guided PTA procedure. The model is me. Using ultrasound, it is able to recognize the thickness of eyebrows and the shortness, eye stick, length of leg for human. We see the world, including the X-ray. Is this shadow picture? In the first place, humans recognize a three-dimensional object by imaging a 3D object from a two-dimensional image reflected onto the retina. On the other hand, in ultrasonography, a three-dimensional object is reconstructed from a series of sections. It means that it changes the recognition result, guessing the solid body from plane image to another result. The future of ultrasound guided PTA the development of ultrasonic equipment and interventional devices to meet the needs of ultrasound guided procedures is needed in the future. So, here is the summary. Endovascular treatment guided by ultrasound was performed for patients with VA occlusion. Then, I initial success and long term patency rate were obtained. To sum up, Ultrasound guided PTA was considered as a powerful tool for vascular access occlusion. Thank you for your attention. As my internet connection is not really good, and I have some difficulty in English. If you have any question or comment, please kindly directly contact to my email address EOU0222MW at Mark. Yahoo.co.jp. I will also share you the material for today's presentation. <laughs>